Um, I'm going to take 20 minutes then. Um, if you have a Bible with you, Mariana uh, shared with us one of the um, one of the things that we were able to look at. There are, there are different perspectives on John's Gospel. It's like a diamond. You can look at it from different angles and uh, see different things. But there are seven miracles, seven signs in John's Gospel. Seven signs that, uh, well, they are signs. They're exactly that. John doesn't call them miracles. He calls them signs because they point towards who uh, Jesus is and what our relationship would uh, to him he calls us into. And the, one of the words that is uh, constantly uh, spoken to us in John's gospel is, so that you might believe. Said a hundred times in John's gospel, or one or two, I think it's 98. He calls us to belief. And the signs are signposts towards belief. Now, um, you'll remember some of the best known words in scripture are the, are the opening verses of John's gospel which echo the beginning of all things. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he came into the world. He who framed and breathed life into everything came and dwelt among us. Amen. I've been reading a... Um, uh, a new translation. It's called the Passion. It's okay. It's quite good of, of the of the scriptures, and um, it has a wonderful way of of uh, explaining uh, very similar words in the first chapter of Hebrew about how the Word of God upholds everything, and um, and he he spoke the panorama of all things and all time into being. Now, the miracles in John's gospel point to who this man, Jesus from Nazareth, really is. So they point to the fact that he is, is the Lord of all things and all time. The miracles show us that distance, when he healed the nobleman's son, he was in a different place. There's no, um, no issue to the Lord of everything. Time is no issue to the Lord of everything. An impotent man had been there for 38 years. God um, <clears throat> upholds all things by his word. The, the scientists have, um, have uh, we must be careful talking about science because the goal of every scientist is to completely change the view of everything. <laughs> but in recent years, the scientists have discovered um, through experiments that the the, the, the universe is continuing to expand. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, they, they can't explain what they've observed, that the, the universe is, is growing. So they've come up with this term because they, they can't find a cause for it. So they've said, well, let's call it dark energy. Well, it's an interesting observation, but they'd have done much better to call it life energy or light energy or God's energy because he moves the universe forward. That's what the original means in, in, in the book of Hebrews. So if you hear the word dark energy, cross it out. It's God. It's his breathing of life. Amen. Upholding all things by his word. Well, um, that's 
just the laws of creation. But one of the really notable miracles in John's gospel, I guess if there was a, a miracle, if you ask people who are not grounded in, in, in a knowledge of God and his word, and you said, what, what, what's a miracle you know about, about, about Jesus? Lots of people would say it's when he walked on water, wouldn't they? And that's the passage Mariana read to us. When Jesus walked on the waves. And what is that a sign of? Well, clearly, our God made flesh is not subject to his own laws of creation. Okay, if you or I tried walking on water, it might not go too well. I mean, Peter tried it in the presence of Jesus, and through faith, the Lord, as part of what was going on, upheld him. But how, what does it say to us that the Son of Man walked on the waves? How does it speak to us? Well, uh, uh, one comment I heard about, about this particular miracle, and it's good for us to think about it, see what we can learn of God's ways from it, is that uh, Jesus was not breaking any law. The laws, of, the laws of the natural world are as God made them. Jesus wasn't breaking them. He was introducing a higher law. And, that, and that's God's way. When, when Jesus moved with the disciples and they did things like uh, went into the cornfields on a Sabbath day because they were hungry, and all the Pharisees looked at them totally disapprovingly and they said, you're breaking the law. No, they weren't. They were obeying a higher law. And that's what, that's what Jesus does. He, he brings in a new law, a higher law. Every one of us, naturally speaking, are subject to laws we don't really like. I'm not talking about the law of the land. I'm talking about the fact that um, just in the earth in which you and I were born, well, there's a law of sin and death. But Jesus has introduced a higher law, and it's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, now this miracle, there are different accounts of it in the Gospels. Um, what was going on? In, in, in John's Gospel, Mariana read that um, it was after Jesus had fed the 5,000 and... Um, he went into a mountain to pray because the people were reacting in a, in, a, in a way he didn't want them to and wanted to take him and make him king. And Jesus retired. He went into the mountains to pray. And come the evening, in a desert place, he'd not come back. And the way it's written in John's gospel is, the disciples couldn't wait. They, 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 they are, we can't spend the night in the wilderness. We want to go back to Capernaum. That's a, that actually means a place of comfort, Nahum's house. And we want to go back where you know, we can buy food and we can find a place to sleep. So into the boat they got without Jesus. And they started to row. It should have been not too far from um, from where the, the, the feeding of the 5,000 occurred back to Capernaum. But a storm blew up. Now, that wasn't that exceptional in the Sea of Galilee. At that, um, the, the geography of the area means it can happen. But this storm, if it, it, it took them right into the middle of the, the, the Sea of Galilee. Both John and Matthew specifically tell us things like it was in the middle of the sea, and it's seven or eight miles wide, 
Um, and it was three or four miles from the shore. They were right in the middle of the sea. And in Matthew's account, we can read um, that the storm got worse and worse till the fourth watch. So it was in the middle of the sea, in the middle of the night, and they were in the middle of a storm. God was working in their circumstances to bring about a bit of a crisis. They were really scared. I mean, it doesn't matter that they were experienced fishermen. They were used to the conditions in Galilee. You'd think they'd have been fine, but they weren't. They were exhausted from hours of rowing. And when Jesus appeared right there in the middle of the storm, instead of understanding and seeing, first of all, it says they were scared stiff. They thought, it's, it's a spirit. They Oh, no, it's, we got trouble enough, and now we're in the middle of real difficulty and panic. Amen. And that's where God met them. I think that most of us, most of the time, only turn and really open our hearts to faith in the middle of a storm. Most of us, most of the time, need to be taken way out of our comfort zone, and then Jesus appears. Amen. And uh, I wouldn't pick on anybody if it wasn't you, but uh, I know you can take it. We got a new sign up. It says, uh, mobile phone's off. Is that right, Mark? <laughs> I'm as guilty as you if mine goes off. Yes, yes. Amen. We need to learn to hold fast and to have faith in the middle of, I don't know what your particular storm is, but believe God, believe God. What it says about John's, in John's gospel is, soon as they saw it, soon as they realized it's the master, they willingly received him into their little boat. Amen. 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 And what happened? The storm was still. In Mark's gospel, it says, there was great calm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What did we sing? Be still for the presence of the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you. I mean, my testimony would be this. Nothing really calms the storms. Not out there, but in here. What else? What else? What else really calms the heart, brings not an outward peace. Now, that was a nice sign, but it was just a sign. Like the other signs in John's gospel, they point to greater things. They point not to natural things, but to spiritual things. Be still. The presence of the Lord. Amen. Paul was talking about circumstances and uh, learning to wait. The disciples learned a lesson in that storm. In, in Matthew's gospel, uh, it actually says at the end of that, um, what happened at that point in the Sea of Galilee was that for the first time, the disciples, for the first time, recognized this is a son of God. This is, this is more than a prophet. This is more than a, a man who speaks wonderful words. This is more than somebody who can work wonders in sick people and in lost people. This is the son of God. That was the lesson that the disciples learnt for the first time um, when they had passed through a crisis and a storm 
and Jesus was more the author of their circumstances than they had ever realized, and he who came to them in the midst of their difficulty. Amen. There's a remarkable end to the story in John's gospel um, because um, if you actually read the account that Mariana read to us, in John's gospel it says, they willingly received him into their vessel and the vessel was in Capernaum. God The Father sent God the Son into the world he had made. He is God. He is master of all time and space. No sooner had they received him into the vessel, they found themselves in Capernaum. Wow. As soon, we can put it this way, as soon as God had done what he intended to do in all the difficulties of their circumstances, the circumstances changed immediately. Amen. 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 The people didn't know what was going on. You can read the account as it goes on. They they worked out. they, They said, well, there was only one boat there. We saw the disciples get in the boat. We saw them leave. We we know Jesus didn't get in the boat. Read the account as it goes on in John's gospel. So they all, they pinched a load of boats from nearby and they they quickly rowed over to Capernaum. They found Jesus. What how did how did you get here? What? And Jesus gave the crowd a warning. He said, Now, now look. In the original, you'll have heard it, it says, Amen, Amen. Or in new verses, it tends to say, oh, let's go really, oh, verily, verily. The translation I've been reading says, let me make this very clear. Let me make this very clear, Jesus said. Don't live for perishable things. I mean, is he still speaking to you and me? Is he working in the circumstances of your life, even though you don't know what's going on and there are winds and waves all over the place? He just wants to come into the vessel. He wants to change the focus, the main focus of what you and I are living for to that which will not perish but will be everlasting life for you and me. Amen. These these different signs and miracles, um, they, 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 they succeeded in pointing the disciples' focus away from everything in the present to that which will last. Amen. How about you and me? You and I will face difficulties which you, you, you and I can say, what's that old um, spiritual song? Nobody knows the trouble I see. Quite right. They don't. God does. And it's all about pointing you and me to focus more on what is everlasting. Let's pray. Thank you for your infinite care, Lord. Thank you that you measure our trials. Every storm and trial, you know my circumstances when nobody else, not even those closest to me, know. You know. And all you want to do is to come into the vessel, to speak your peace into my troubled sea. You said, as one of the your 
last things, Lord, you said was peace. I'm leaving you. Peace. It can only come from you, Lord. Our own hearts will produce anything but. Thank you for ever dwelling among us, partaking of our human nature and trials. And thank you for giving grace by your spirit from above to change everything and to bring us to the place and understanding that you want us to be and have. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.